today I'm going to be looking at popper fry in and around the weed beds. So all these normal lines that we take with us out in the water, a whole plethora of them, they're no need. Today I'll be simple fishing. Big popper fry, floating line, my boat partner Jim Foster there getting kindled up. Nice cup of coffee to start the day from the lodge. Conditions, not great, a little bit calm, a bit bright as well, but there is definitely fish in the weed beds. So let's see how we get on. As we head out in the water, um, destination's the south arm for the day. Just a little caveat to add in here, if you stay on at the end of this video, you'll see how to tie this fly. There's a lot of stages to it, but trust me, it's worth it. Um, my popper fry, believe it or not, is loaded with lead, and I'll explain that in the video. So we get ourselves settled in. As you can see, conditions are far for great, but you'll see here when I cast, as soon as my line hits the water, I give it three or four big rips and you can see the commotion that makes. Uh, that's the key. And then I'm figuring eating it back to the boat. The whole point is to create a V all the way back. If a fish comes up, you don't speed up, you don't slow down, you don't stop. You keep the thing going all the way back to the boat. This is a mistake a lot of people make. Um, when they get a follow, they get excited and they do something different. I've said it before, you can see there again, big rips. I've said it before to people that, that come out with me in the float and fry. If a fish comes up behind it, the best thing you can do is look up at the sky and wait for your line to lock up. It's um, It really is a case of waiting until it locks up. It's going to change, speed up, go slow, stop, forget all that because the fish loses interest. You need to create that V all the way back up to the boat. As I was getting Jim to, to show this off, actual rips and figure eight, um, he gets he gets some interest. You can tell by the language. Wait for this bit. You still there, Jim? Leave it, leave it. He's still right there. He's going. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, that was painful. So where hell did you miss that one? I'll show you the loop knot that I use. Um, and this allows the fly to move freely. It takes a little bit of practice. Once you've got it, it's perfect. You can see I've got an old loop on there, so cut the him off. So, you come through the back. Like so, create a loop away from you. If you've got that loop there, take your tag end, come round the loop, catch it, pull till it's tight. So you have two loops there. Your tag end goes in between. Make your loop bigger to get the fly through. Put your fly through. And then that's how to make your loop. Obviously you can make that loop big or as small as you want. And that's it. Really quite simple. Hopefully you've seen that all right. So a quick look at the casting. You get an idea of what I mean by the, <coughs> the aggressive pulls when it first hits the water really rip it back. You're, you're trying to make loads of disturbance. The whole point of this is getting any fish that are in the vicinity interested, um, garner their attention, bring them into your fly, and then just a figure eight, continual V all the way back to the boat. Didn't think to cast long because you really didn't need it, especially when you're over the weed beds. You're just spooking everything. So it was big rips that really did draw the fish in. Like I say, just keep that figure eight going. All the way through to the back of the boat. And finally, Jim gets into one. Go on, Jim. That is awesome. That was great guiding as well. Thanks, mate. I just seen it at the corner of my eye. And I was like, ah, that's a good fish. That is a good fish. 
Godson. Have it. Have it, all right. Ah, oh, he's not that big. Nah, he's not that big. But Still. we'll take him. That was brilliant. Jim, one o'clock, one o'clock, no, two o'clock, two o'clock, full line, two o'clock. There you go, he's on it, he's on it. Bang. Just as well I had a pee when I did. You did? If you hadn't had a pee then? Yeah, we would never have had that. Right. Ah, he's not the fish we're after, but he's a fish, mate. Well done, Jim. Yeah, he's a little one, but yeah, he is a little one. He'll be alright. Don't oh. video me, fuck it. Oh, there you go. Is he out? Yeah. Nice. With the fishing being tough of it and then <coughs> it was time to celebrate. What better way to celebrate than with a beer? I mean now we're up at Gibbets, decided to do a drift all the way down this side of the lake. So we get come back down, we're, we're drifting on to easily in point here. It's an awful lot of weed, a lot of weed. We we're trying to get right under the edge here. This is one of the things with fly he does. If you can find a hole in the weed, perfect. If you can't, try and get a drift down the edge or drifting from open water onto the weed that you're hitting that wall because the, the trout tend to focus on that area. They use the, the weed as a wall and they herd the fry up against it. So this is me adjusted the camera so you can see how I retrieve when I'm fishing this. And I actually pull a fish up. So it's a big pull, oh, oh, bigger of eight. Like that, yeah. And if you keep it's watching in the stuff. top corner there, just above my rod. Look, look, look. Right, oh. Go on. Fuck. If you can see that, I had a fish coming oh, after the fly. Man. You put the big one back on. Yeah. Sorry about the language. Two big pulls. See if he's still oh, there. Man. Fingers crossed. But no, that opportunity is gone. However, not long after that, Panic. Need the net. I'm in. Needs the net. I'm in, and it's a good one. One fish is all it takes, Steve. The lake's pretty calm by now as well. But a bit of perseverance. We managed to get a proper, oh, proper trout. Nice. <laughs> Finally. Well done, Steve. -o. On the float and fry. Very close to the edge of the weed. Beautiful fish. Yeah, that's a beauty. And the pop up. Big pop up. Quality fish. Quality. Yeah. That's a boy, mate. This one was actually coming home with us. So I should have chopped it. This is for Jim's neighbour. Quick picture. Big tail in it, nice silver fish. What we were after, oh, and that happens. Look at that, idiot. Yeah. He's Utter gone. Idiot. Oh well. After the fly feeders, um, they use a 10 foot 7 weight rod, medium and stiff action, very strong fluorocarbon. This is the original Fluoroflex and 10 pound. So it's really powerful stuff, and I'll only ever fish with one fly. These are the three that I'll go through. However, September, October, November, I tend to use the big popper fry. But yeah, big four. We spin the boat around, um, get ourselves back into position at the top of the drift. And after a long, long drift, and it was a long drift, it finally happened for us. All that time, all that effort. It's finally paid off. We're just about to move. Jim's nailed it. That's a proper one, Jim. That's what we're after. Oh, 
taking some line, eh? Oh, look at the popper in its mouth. It's a rainbow, proper rainbow. Oh yeah, that's what we're after. Take your time, Jim. Take your time, pal. Proper fish, that. Well done, James. <laughs> oh, he's a nice one. Nice silver fish, that. You gotta hide him up for me. Yeah. And I'll get ready, I'll take a couple of pictures as well. The guy's come out of his mouth. Brilliant. Got me the fly? Steve Cullen's special. Yep. Let's see this fish, Jim. There the boys were after. Oh yeah. Yes, Jimbo. Well done, mate. Got a nice tail on it too. Yeah. Shortly yep. after that, this happened. And after the rain came in, it pretty much killed everything. Um, low pressure, a lot of rain, who knows. As soon as it went away, the lake went completely out of flat calm. When it goes like that, it's a flat calm, Steve. Game over. It's flat calm now. I think, unfortunately, I think that's game over. For you the call day. that a day. Yeah. Flat calm. I suppose you never know, Steve. I might actually put all of this Jim's voice. So there we go. Your yeah. day on Rutland. Hard work, flat hard calm work. now. You can see everything. Very hard work. Listen to that. But you know, rewarding fish to be I had. Know. Honest to Christ. I might just put all of this on. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Cheers now, bye. So now let's have a wee look at how to tie this float and fry. This is my fat float and fry, and it really is a fat float and fry, popper fry if you like. It's the one that I use to catch big fish. I've used it for, Christ, 20 year, maybe 25 years, something like that. A long, long time. And I stick to the same premise all the time. I very rarely change it. I did change colours, um, I didn't change the frets, I didn't change anything. So let's go ahead and tie it. This is a hook. It's got a massive, massive long point. A bar of us, 2500V. Look at the point on this thing. Look at that. Look how long that point is. I know people will say barbless, however, when I'm fishing for big fish, I tend not to. This is a very strong streamer hook. Forgive my squeaky um, chair. Now the difference in our fly, well a lot of the ones that you'll buy, <coughs> I want this to sit straight away. So that's medium lead wire there. And I get 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12. So I've got a dozen wraps, a thin red wire, thin lead wire. <coughs> and what that does is when it hits the water, the weight in the rear cocks that fly. So it starts fishing like that straight away. All this is under the water. So, white tying thread and coming at the rear. Create a wee bulb, pull your lead onto it, and then wrap up. Now, because this is such a big fly, I'm using a big lump of foam. Come over the edge, tidy everything up. Uh, there's my foam. So the foam that I use is Bear with me. Here it's here. 
nine mil large, massive. So what I do is I cut that in half. So I've got a shape like that. That goes on the hook that way. Then with your scissors and just curve around. I'm just curving around the tip like so. If you just come in with a, a lighter. And it just rounds everything off nicely. So this bit's <coughs> crucial as well. You notice my thread's right up to the tip there. You always tie it in this way. If you tie it in that way, it kinks wrong, comes up at a weird angle. Keep it like that, pinch and loop, nice and tight. And then come down so your foam kind of hits the, the lead. Wrap, oh, wrap and back up. It'll want to spin. So if you come round and round the eye like that, and then come back. So you were going clockwise, then come back anti-clockwise. Round the eye again, like so. So that's us got our basis. We've got our lead on our big hook and we've got our foam. That's your uh, key bits. Next up, I've got Natural brown mink. I like natural brown and chocolates, the two that I find. And I'm just going to get myself a length to work with. So you want to separate. Don't use too much moisture because moisture goes in the hook. These are not stainless steel hooks, so they eventually will rust. Create a, an area there. And then secure. Make sure none of the fur's getting trapped. Once it's secure, one, two, three, four, five turns. Pull everything up and out of the way in a V. Come round, as if you're doing a clink hammer, come round that tying in point. What that does is, it stops that tail getting caught. So back down, this is about a million years old, it's original white Fritz, no UV, no crystal flash, no pearl, no translucent, none of that, just plain white Fritz on a really thick old core. I think Stevie Parton sorted me at this stuff 100 years ago, legend that boy. So just come up and then wind up. Touching turns, didn't be overly fussy. Pull your fibres back as you go. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of space behind the post, coming up, locking that off. And with the scissors, and just trim that. What I'll do here is I'll kind of half tidy up the frets. It's a big fly and a lot of this stuff's got to be hidden with resin, but just try and keep it half tidy. So there you go, that's your body created. We're now going to pull up our mink strip. Get an idea of where it's going to be. Again, separate the fluff. And if you use your thumb on top, Press your thumb and use your thumb as a guide. Your thread will slip down your thumb nice and easy like that. Stops everything getting caught. Sharp pair of scissors. So we've tied our mink strip in. Again, pulling all my fritz back and out the way. Our next stage is the eyes. So the eyes, I tend to use two colours, gold and red. I've got red here, these are five mil. You can go right up to seven mil. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm literally finished the fly there. So we'll whip finish this. Like 
one of the problems of time with hair is it gets everywhere. So I've got there some super glue. And I'm going to lather this on either side where the eyes are going. Make sure you didn't get any in the fur. And I'm just going to tilt the fly while I put these eyes on. So I'll show you how I do it. So you see I've got the eye sitting um, behind the foam. So you on this side. Good squeeze with your fingertips. Like so. And then as that's drying, wet the top of the mink and get it out of the way. Take your scissors to the underside, move some frits. I've then got some thin man gulf and that goes in the space between the foam and the eyes. Tiny touch more. And I'll turn the fly upside down in the vise so you can see. Again, I want to get rid of any fibres that are in my way. And again, soak this in, get it right in, in between the eyes. You see, let it soak in. One final for luck. Smooth this off. And that is him. That is your fat popper fry that I use for perch, roach, bream, sander for September, through to December. Um, get on the reservoirs at the back end, boys, it's phenomenal. I really hope you enjoyed that. Obviously, this goes along with that fry feeding video. It's a fly that I was using in that. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye.